what's up EF? Troy here to talk to you about what we got available for the November release. First up, we've got Creative License number five. This is a nectarine preserves level fruiting that has some threads woven into it that come from a previous collaboration that you're gonna to wanna to hear about. We've got a fresh batch of East Bank. We haven't done one of these in a long time. Uh, so this was a single punch in that turned out really nice. We've also got West Bank. This is the second batch of West Bank that we've ever done, this time with even more maple syrup. Then we've got Undertone, done with some nectarines and some vanilla. Gotta have some vanilla in there. And then last but not least, just a great classic blend of fruit stand blackberry. Cheers. All right, EF. Yeah. Just wanna say thank you to everybody that renewed for 2024. We've got an awesome year coming up ahead. Thank you to everybody that came to our member party this weekend. There's still some remnants here on the patio of some of the fun that we had. So we just want to say thank you to all those people. Uh, and we have got some awesome blends that are going to be ready for everybody next week. We have first up creative license number five. This is a blend of a collab of, of, of a collab barrel that we did with uh, Floodland with nectarines at a preserve level, so over four pounds per gallon. And then we also added a barrel of undertone as well. So it's not an official Flubman collab, but the base of that collab comes through exceptionally well. It's with the complexities of the base beer to a level that we've never seen before because of how hot forward uh, their Saison recipe is. These came uh, with early season organic nectarines that we got from California. Um, and I just, I just love, man, everybody knows I love nectarines. Just in the nose, intense nectarine, but still incredible complexity coming from the base beers, both the undertone and the Flubbins uh, barrel. Foam stability. Low acidity. Not even medium acidity, low acidity. Um, because of how low the acid that we get from one of those barrels that came into it. But still, classic Casey, um, funk, intense fruitiness. My mouth is just puckering, or not puckering, but watering from the uh, clean acid that's in there. It just makes this an incredible, drinkable, and rich and complex mix. Or excuse me, blend. Next up, with a brand new label, uh, we've got East Bank. So, haven't done an East Bank recipe, or an East Bank blend in a couple of years, I'd say, off the top of my head. But here it is. We've got a punch in that we did with uh, earlier this year. So it's been about nine months in barrel. It's got some of that old school East Bank caramel character in the recipe. The honey came from right up the valley behind me. And it's just, I mean, it's just a home run with like what you would expect from East Bank. So for all those team no fruit, all the OGs that like this, um, it's a, uh, Here's a, good, here's a good reason to explain why this has been happening in the last couple of months. These beers are always aged back in our warm room horizontally. And so when we grab them the day of that we're shooting these videos, they kind of get disturbed. So this isn't a sign of overcarbonation. It's just that the beer has been disturbed. And as we hand, hand label them for the event, um, or just kind of transfer them around, that's what's happening. Uh, if these were these are just normal carb level beers, but it's always interesting to know why this occurs like on the days that we're doing this. This doesn't occur if you've chilled it, uh, even if it's just been sitting warm on a shelf. This will this will not happen. Our carbonation is on point. Caramel characters in the nose as I just went back to it, so we get some really nice caramel malt characteristics. But we get that honey flavor in there. The honey that is coming not necessarily just pure honey. Actually, I would say there is a little bit of that, but also the esters that we get from the, uh, the yeast as it ferments that honey to create different flavors than just normal fermentations that occur from the malts. Medium, medium, low acidity. Just, just in incredibly... Um, there's so many there's so many different things going on I don't even know where to start um, this is one that we don't get to make very often but when we do it's one that I, we take a lot of pride in um, in either blending or selecting the barrel that we're going to use to make this and so 
so this is one that I don't mind having uh, hanging around a little bit because this is a fun one for those people that know. If you know, you know. Sister beer to East Bank, West Bank. So we call West Bank. Um, East Bank is called, we're on the East Bank of the Roaring Fork River. This is West Bank, which is uh, kind of the alternative. And this one, instead of honey, uses maple syrup. So for this batch, second batch of West Bank, we decided to go with twice the amount of maple sugar. Maple syrup, excuse me. So because initially we expected maple uh, syrup to be the same um, sugar, have the same uh, amount of sugar as East Bank, but quickly realized that is not the case. So we doubled up the maple sugar, uh, maple sugar on this one, and the results are outstanding. Outstanding. Completely different nose compared to East Bank, even though the base work, the base recipe is the exact same. So the same caramel malts, the same uh, other grains. It's just that we used the maple syrup instead of. Uh, honey. The fruitiness of the yeast of our house culture is completely different between the two. They're both incredible, uh, similar intensities, but the flavors are completely different. There's a different sweetness to this. The maple uh, maple syrup is adding flavors that are unlike anything we've done before, even batch one of West Bank. And so this is a great one. Uh, again, it's just a single punch in that we did with this beer. So this is a fun one that uh, I can't wait for you to try. Next up, we've got Undertone, Nectarine, and Vanilla. This is with Madagascar Vanilla, or, woo, organic nectarines. stirred up as you can tell but again <laughs> with vanilla I've kind of decided that I don't really want it to be subtle if you're paying for vanilla we're gonna use it I kind of want it to not hit you over the head but it should be one of the first things that you smell and this is definitely the case uh, with this blend big flavor in the nose but still the nectarines are there even at two pounds per gallon Medium acidity. I love it when we do these um, monthly releases and everything has similar or to even lower acidity. We've listened to what you like, what you don't like. And uh, the sweetness that's coming through from the vanilla, the nectarine characteristic, which is definitely different than peaches in its own unique and incredible way. Um, this is a great, I think this would do really good with a vanilla dessert. Uh, this is um, a treat, especially at that $20 price point. This is a good one to get. All right, last but not least, we've got Fruit Stand Blackberry. I just love using blackberries that we get from Palisade. Uh, this is one that we just went with a classic base beer. I'll never forget, almost, because just over nine years ago, I think is when we released our first um, blackberry blend with the uh, that came from Colorado, Western Silver, Colorado, and so I just love always blending these. It's, it's a great beer to have on tap in our tap room. It's a great entry level beer for like the non sour beer drinkers that want to try something fruited um, that has a flavor that they that they are familiar with. And so that's what this beer is. This, uh, this the nose, the great. Uh, I mean, it smells sweet. Like how is that a thing? Smells sweet. I can just taste the the tannin of the blackberry as I drink this, like in a great way. It like tastes just like eating a fresh blackberry. Um, it's got the uh, received sweetness that comes from the unfermentable sugar alcohols and the berries. And it's got all the complexities of the Cezanne base beer. This is another one that I wish I had just pallets of, because this is one of the easiest things in the world to sell um, once somebody's tried it. So I appreciate all of you for trying these beers, and I can't wait to see you more 
next month for the last month of the release of, of uh, 2023 and then 2024 as well. So cheers again.